ago we went to China and won the world championship. Maybe you didn't know that, but now you do. We are 20 women who stand united in defense of our country's title. You may not know us, but you will. off between the United States and Denmark, the second meeting for each of these teams during this World Cup competition as we continue our coverage here on the Deuce. Checking out the Group C standings, Denmark's on top. They have three points thanks to a win. The USA and China each with one point. No points for Australia. They are not expected to get any points during this 95 tournament. And a pleasant good day, everyone. Welcome to Yevla, Sweden. I'm John Paul Della Camera. The United States and China each have a single point because of a 3-3 tie on Tuesday. We talked to Carla Overbeck, the team captain, about the disappointing result. I think our team was disappointed um, because any time we, we tie, it's just like a loss to us. So we were very disappointed, and um, Tony just told us basically to keep our heads up and we'll go after the next game. And they'll go after the next game, offensively speaking, without their offensive leader, their top gun, Michelle Akers, bothered by both a head and knee injury. Our broadcast colleague, Amy Allman, has Michelle standing by. Amy? Thanks, JP. Michelle, I know you probably don't remember much of this, but as you're watching it on the monitor, why don't you comment on what's going on? Okay, well, we had a corner kick here, and we set up, and I uh, jumped up to clear it, and the girl crashed into me, obviously, and I ended up uh, getting a concussion and a sprained right knee when I landed. Here we see it again. She just rams right into me. And as I fell, uh, my knee buckled. So right now I'm facing it, uh, getting over a concussion and a, a sprained knee. But I think I'll, I'll be all right. Now for the question everyone wants answered, when are we going to see number 10 back out on the pitch? Well, we're planning for the quarterfinals, so hopefully our team will do well tonight and uh, versus Australia. And if everything goes as planned, I'll be out there. Thanks, Michelle. Good luck to you. Back to you, JP. Thanks, Amy. So we won't see number 10 out on the field tonight for the United States, but we will see number 16 in her place, Tiffany Milbert. Come back with us. We'll meet the starting lineups for both teams. Get a jump on the soccer season. To score. Uh, boy. Uh, boy. ESPN 2's coverage of the 1995 Women's World Cup is being brought to you by MasterCard. It's more than a credit card, it's smart money. By Adidas, a women's brand since 1932. And by Snickers, presenting sponsor of the 1995 World Women's Soccer Cup. Welcome back everyone to Stromballen Stadium here in Jevla, Sweden. Along with Amy Alman, I'm John Paul Della Camera. We're getting ready for the United States to kick things off against Denmark. Second World Cup game for each of these teams. We'll take a look first at the United States starting lineup. Once again, it's Brianna Scurry in goal. This is her 24th cap, tied right now with Amy Alman in terms of goalkeeper caps. Carla Overbeck again in its sweeper. The midfield of Foudy and Venturini will have to be more effective tonight. And Milbert will be the one substitution for Akers up top. The team is coached by Tony DiCicco. April Heinrichs, one of the assistants on this team, and Lauren Gregg, who has been the assistant since 89, is also there as well. For Denmark, in goal, Larson, who had a 2-0 shutout against the United States, as well as a 7-0 loss. Watch for Fleng, the sweeper, and Helle Jensen, who might be their top player for Denmark. The Danish team is coached by Kel Gansorn. For the United States, much hope relies on her shoulders. Brianna Scurry, who gave up more goals, unfortunately, the other night than she has in the last six games. This is a big game for her. Definitely. One thing that she's got to remember is she did have a few game great saves in the first game, and, she, and you can't take that away from her. It's going to be really important that she, she comes up with a big save early. And as soon as the whistle blows, it'd be nice even if she could play a few, balls with, a few balls with their feet and have the defenders get her involved in the game. There is Milbert who is in. We at ESPN want to thank MasterCard, Budweiser, Snickers, and Adidas for allowing us to bring you today's game commercial-free. And we are underway from Yevla, Sweden. Ball is played all the way down the far side. Fawcett will clear it. 
This segment of the game is presented commercial free by MasterCard. Throw in coming up right away for Denmark, who are dressed in red and white today. Predominant red, USA in predominant white. On the throw in on the far sideline. Inside, they look for Krog. It's loose in the box. Struck back inside by Denmark. They're a big physical side, as you'll probably see in comparison to China. This could be a totally different game, Amy. Definitely. On the, on the defensive side, it's going to be hard since Tiffany is one of the players that replaced Michelle Akers. That's one of the things we're going to be missing up top is her height, definitely. But one thing we will gain is a little speed. Tiffany's got a little bit quicker burst than Michelle does. One thing that, that we may be concerned about is Milbert has not gone a full 90 minutes in quite a while, but she has scored one goal in the last four games. Denmark will take over. Now to the halfway line. On the attack, Jensen, she's the player to watch, the team captain, putting it into space, and now it's broken up. Fawcett was in there, now it's Foudy, number 11 in white for the United States. We are scoreless, just underway here in the second minute from Yevla, Sweden. Referee for today's match, Mamaduba Kamara. Working the lines, Christine Fry and Anna Pia Batista. On the left side, now it's Lily attacking for the United States. Lily looking to cross it, and she should get a corner kick coming up. Oh, they're going to say goal kick. It went off Lily last, so a goal kick coming up. It did rain here for a good portion of the day. In fact, about an hour before the game, it stopped. What can you tell us, Amy, about the field conditions, and what did the rain actually do? Well, watching the coach warm up the goalkeepers, all he did was make sure that the goalkeepers were aware of the skip on the field. Right now, it's not wet enough where I don't think anyone's going to lose any traction. The ball will be a little bit wet, which means they have to be extra careful on crosses. Uh, coming on on breakaways, they may have to step out a little bit earlier. But the main thing is once the ball hits, is watching that skip, because sometimes the ball speeds up a little bit. Tiffany Roberts, the 18-year-old, number five for the USA. The pass is picked off. Number six, Rika Holm. Intended for Jensen, taken instead. Hansen, the long-distance shot, and that goes wide of Brian Ascari. It'll be a goal kick coming up for the United States. Brianna Scurry getting her start. We mentioned tied with Amy Allman now for 24 caps, and we'll see her in action here. There's that skip that we talked about. Yeah, she, she did a good thing. One of the things you got to make sure on a, on a field like this is that you get your feet behind the ball because if it's going to skip really fast and you just go with your hands, you're not going to get there in time. So Scurry's got to have some really quick feet, and I know she does. And hopefully she can get her hands on that ball just one time before too much time goes by. Should point out no one was blaming Brianna for the loss the other night. Not at all. But yeah. a goalkeeper always feels worse. Definitely. You can only replay that in your head so many times. And, and when you see it on the replay screen, when even it's in slow motion, a, a goalkeeper's always thinking, I should have had it. There's, I can't believe I missed it. Um, taking, not taking into account that you couldn't see it. You didn't know which way the player was going. Sometimes you, your vision is blocked. And, it, um, you know, she's just got to put that game behind her. I thought she did a great job. She, she may have done, done things a, few a little bit differently um, if she had to do them over again. But she did fine. Foudy on defense now as Denmark comes back the other way. Straight up the middle. Hamilton couldn't get to it. Here's a chance inside. And the shot was just missed by the number 14 player, Lennart Madsen. But Denmark's looking pretty strong in the attack, finding some holes. Yeah, they are finding a few holes. Sometimes the defenders just have to play it safe. I know they like to keep control of the ball, but sometimes uh, Hamilton may, may have just booted that out for safety. Carla Overbeck, 31 straight games, all minutes played. The team captain who cleared it up. And now this one is knocked out of play. There'll be a throw-in coming up here for Denmark. One of only two teams that have an actual winning record against the United States. Norway is the other. So Denmark's a side that the U.S. respects. And they'll play it back to the keeper, Dorte Larsen. Larsen left foots it straight up the middle. Brought down, Metzen. Seven is Lawerson. Across on the right side, partially blocked. The pass was made by Katrine Peterson. And this one went out on that far sideline. United States ball, much to the dismay of the Denmark bench. When United States gets the ball, they really have to concentrate hard on keeping possession of it a little bit. You know, during the China game, they never really completed three or four passes in a row. And it's really unnerving when... Denmark is, is chasing for a little bit. Right now, neither team has dominated very much. They changed the call, too. It's going the other way to Denmark. Initially, the linesman had called it the other way. On the far side, 
Kroll, number 11, plays it back right side, inside the middle, headed down and out of the box, and then cleared by Mildred. Back the other way. Denmark chasing it down. The number three player is Fleng. She is a sweeper. Strong physical presence at the back for Denmark. Peterson's pass was blocked. U.S. looking to get it so far. Gabera nor Ham have touched the ball. And we're in the sixth minute of a scoreless game. Fawcett. I think uh, Denmark has marked up Karen pretty tightly. And she's now expected to take Michelle Aker's role. Usually she plays outside on the wing, and now she's up front. She's not used to that role. She's usually used to checking way back in the midfield, receiving the ball, and turning and beating some players. Now she's going to be stuck on top of the 18, and hopefully they'll play the ball to her feet because she's much better receiving the ball to her feet than, she, than, than as Michelle, while they're used to playing it to her head. should point out, too, that Gabera played the other day despite a slight yeah. back problem that caused her to miss a couple of days of training. In the middle, Foudy broke it up. Madsen has it blocked, stays with it. Lena Madsen all the way back the other way. Fawcett chasing. Fawcett will clear it, intended for Ham. And you could see the matchup that time. The number five player, or number six player, Rika Holm, was right on her. They try to stop her. They try to deny her from getting the ball. Yeah, I think the United States is still may be playing a little bit tentative. I'd like to see them control the ball a little bit more. She is so tough to mark up. If you give her too much room, she can exploit it. And if you go tight on her, she can also blow by you. Definitely. Those first three steps is something that once, once she's faced up, she can get by you, and then you don't know what's going to happen from there. Ham scored the other night. One of the three goals scored by the United States, but offense wasn't the problem the other night. Three goals is enough to win, especially in a World Cup game, but they also gave up three, including, uncharacteristically, two within five minutes, minutes 75 and 80. This is Gabera, number 12, great on the dribble. Gave it up into the middle, and now it's taken back by Denmark. They're a good counterattacking side, but that time it's busted up by Lilly. Quickly in a space for Mia Hamm. The two North Carolina Tar Heel players combined on that. Ham. Really, with her first case of ball possession here. Now it's Gabera. Look at the attention she draws on the cross to the far post. But there's no one there on that side. It goes out. But that's the most ball possession the U.S. has had up top so far today. Yeah, Karen did a great job of holding on to the ball. And it was nice to see some white jerseys there for a change. During the China game, she was all alone and got shut down quickly. Corner kick coming up. Normally, in these situations, you look for Michelle Akers. I think they might try to hit Venturini. She's also a great header, and she's usually their target person if Michelle has two or three people on her. Venturini scored one via the header the other night. Corner kick coming up for Gabera. Ninth minute of play, still scoreless. Gabera sends it in low. Headed down! It looks like Christy Lilling will get credit for the USA's first goal of the game. Great goal by the United States. You have to give all the credit to Christine Lilly. She, she runs, so she's directly in front of the goal and not past the goal when she makes connection. Nothing the keeper can do. She sees it. There's red shirts all around. Christine Lilly finds the only spot that she can go, go for it and get the ball all the way through. That's textbook, too. Up in the air and then heads it right down. Yeah. Again, a lot of times you have the tendency to just keep right on running, and then you're not in front of the goal. The United States does a great job of framing the goal. Gabera will get the assist on the Lilly goal. And we've got that in the 10th minute. So the United States, like they did the other day, have a lead and one. Lilly will get credit for the goal playing in her 92nd international game. And for Christine Lilly, it's international goal number 34. Well, let's see if the United States has learned their lesson after China and see if they can, can keep ahead here. Straight up the middle. Jensen. That's blocked. Gabera chasing it down. Joy Fawcett who adds to the team speed back there. Now Roberts covers up for Fawcett, who's going forward at the halfway line. She'll think about heading back. From Roberts, Fawcett number 14, Roberts five. 
Fawcett will take it right side. And Roberts will cover for as it's played across into the middle, headed away by Denmark. Gathered back, though. Here's Lilly. Christine Lilly drives it up. A left footed shot. And you know what? That's not too far off for someone that has a great left foot like Lilly has. Yeah, a great shot by Lilly. And I think she's just trying to keep Denmark honest on their defense. Now they're going to make sure they mark her up a little bit tighter, and if they do that, then that's going to leave some space for someone else to get through. Christine Lilly from Wilton, Connecticut, a four-time All-American at the University of North Carolina. Roberts, back up field. Denmark hasn't had much of the ball possession. All of a sudden, the United States has picked up their game. Foudy will give it up. Played wide by Lilly. USA, when they're at their best, they use the full length and width of the field, spreading it around. Even when Akers is playing, everyone seems to get into the offensive flow. There's Gabera. There are those quick touches from Venturini. They wanted Milbert. Now instead, here's the turn. Mia Hamm somehow got a shot away. There's that burst again. And Mia just faked one way right, got two defenders to lean just a little bit. Next thing you know, it's coming around the other way. Participating in bringing you today's game is Nike. One to nothing lead for the U.S. Mia Hamm's college teammate, Christine Lilly, has the only goal in the 10th minute of this first half. Overbeck will clear it long. Hamm chasing it, almost got to it. Tough collision with Fleng. Leisman puts the flag up. Denmark will have the ball. Michelle Akers in the warm-up top on that USA bench, and that's not really where she wants to be. She wants to be out there, but we talked to her earlier today, and her spirits are very good. Here's Milbert coming back in the live action. A 1-0 USA lead. Milbert with that good speed straight up the middle. They're not closing her. And now, finally, at the end, she had Ham open, and I think she was ready to make that play. Or Roberts, I should say, on the right side. Yeah, Denmark did a good job of stepping up at the perfect time. Roberts cut inside. Milbert gave her space. Roberts now to Milbert, number 16. Try to send it through, but it was blocked. She wanted Venturini. And a foul the other way on the United States on Milbritt. We expected this game to be more physical than the China game. Certainly China has more speed, but Denmark plays more like a typical European team. Yeah, they, they, they have a zone defense, and they play very safe in the back and like to pass it around and sort of wait for that right moment to go. They're not always attacking all the time. Venturini was looking for it. Ham gets it. Mia Ham, number nine. The top scorer this year, and she took a tumble. Got some help, though. Bergie Christensen brought her down. What Denmark doesn't know is the more you rile Mia Ham, the more she gets going. She's used to that, though, from North Carolina. Yeah, I mean, she once she gets riled a little bit, you better watch out because she's going to come after you. Carla Overbeck will put it in play, the team captain. Overbeck strikes it off the right foot. Inside the box, headed away by Denmark. A chase for the ball. Anna Nielsen comes up with it, being pressured by Venturini. Foudy with a block. It stays in play. Deep in Denmark territory. Now finally Denmark comes away. Look at Jensen. Oh, she got hammered there by Hamilton. Play on the advantage call. Back on the left side. Madsen. This is the first time Denmark has come this far upfield in a while. Couple of touches, right side intended for Madsen, and that's broken up. This portion of the game is being presented to you by Budweiser. Straight up the middle, here's a shot from Jensen. Just wide of a diving score. Looked like she got down there a little bit late. One of the toughest things about being a goalkeeper for the United States, you've got to make the big save, and oftentimes, Amy, it's after you haven't had any attention at all. Yeah. It being a goalkeeper is so psychological. I mean, a lot of the other players get to kind of get their nerves going and, and, and get relaxed by running around. For a goalkeeper to just have to stand there and wait for that save is tough. Overbeck ready to put it in play. Headed by Venturini. Intended for Ham. Cleared out of the back by Fleng. Overbeck again. Now it's number 11, Judy Fowley. Julie Fowdy, a four-time All-American at Stanford. Here's Ham. Playing back deep as she can go. And now it's cleared out of play. 
Throw in coming up for Denmark. One to nothing. United States are leading it. We're in the 16th minute of this first half. A gorgeous day now, finally, here in Yevla after all of the rain and thunder and lightning. But right now, it's a great day for soccer. Glad you're joining us here on the Deuce along with a former member of this U.S. team, Amy Allman. I'm John Paul Della Camero. Here's Milbert on the far side. And that is knocked out as well. And they're giving it to Denmark. Denmark will get another crack at it. Earlier this year, the United States defeated Denmark 7-0. Denmark came back at the Algarve Cup and beat them 2-0, which gave the U.S. team a lot more respect for this Danish side, and here they come on the attack. Quick give and go works. Holm. Playing it across. Venturini almost had it stolen away. Taken back now the right side. Tiffany Roberts has room and speed. Try to make that pass and got a good break on the ball. And Gabera was pushed down. A foul on Lennart Turp. It's also good that Roberts is able to make a couple passes and make sure that they get to the right people because she had a little trouble last game because it was so fast-paced. I'm sure her confidence is up a little bit now as well. Free kick. Joy Fawcett. Leaves it off. Carla Overbeck. This is as far forward as she's gone, except on a free kick today. Foudy leaves it off for Lily. On the cut to her left, it was blocked, but Foudy will get it. Julie Foudy, one of nine players who returned from the 91 championship team. Lifted now by Denmark, but that ball belongs to the U.S. Overbeck with a clearance. Ham tried a nice flick. Cabrera ends up with it. Right back in his face for Ham. Tripped outside of the box. Oh, and it had just a play go on. It would not have been a penalty kick. I thought she was tripped outside of it, but I thought a foul for sure. Yeah, she definitely got in the way of that one. Mia did a good job of getting inside of her player. Her and Gabera read each other well. Here is Ham. Gabera just missed off the right toe. Venturini. You're hearing a lot more communication today from the U.S. players than we heard the other day against China. Fawcett, this time running wide on the left. She's got good speed, showing it there. Blocked, and the keeper tried to keep it in and does. Otherwise, it would have been a corner kick. Right now, Mia does a really good job of getting inside that defender and, and creating what I thought would have been a foul in anybody's book. She clearly had the ball, and she stopped her from probably a goal. Well, live or on replay, that was a foul. But it wasn't called. It's back to Overbeck. It's still 1-0 USA. In the 19th minute of this first half, Christine Lilly has the only goal of the game. Throw in for Denmark on that far side. Anna Nielsen sent it in. And a tough tackle from Venturini may get a warning. May get more than that as she's walking away from the referee. Nope, just the ball is coming back. There's Tisha Venturini. Great career at North Carolina. Yeah, not a bad decision to foul here. Here it's, it's pretty harmless that it's, you know, right where you kick off practically for the beginning of a game. The only thing is Denmark is, is much taller than the United States. Fleng strikes that one hard. One in the air. Nice job by Overbeck. Great and job. This will go out of play. Carla very strong in the air. Has some tough responsibilities back there, playing with only three players back, although the U.S. players do come back, including Lilly, and help out. Christine Lilly's throw in. And this goes out off a deflection. United States will have the ball. What can you tell us about the difference in the game, game one against China and the difference here tonight? It's definitely not as fast paced. Uh, so far, both teams took the first five minutes to sort of feel each other out. And now our forwards are getting the ball much more than they were. I, I don't think I saw Gabera get the ball and able, you know, be able to control it a few more times or even complete a pass. So I think as a team, we're moving a lot better and we're playing a little bit more safer. Yeah, in the first five or six minutes, remember, Gabera nor Hammond really had a good touch on the ball. Here's Overbeck's pass to Gabera playing very deep now, coming way back. Jensen knocks it away. She's a great player, number nine in red. Upfield they come. Metzen. Trying to work on Hamilton, brings it inside. Hamilton stayed with her, then brought her down. A foul on Linda Hamilton, who has gone through six knee surgeries, but has come back to play on her second 
World Cup team. Yeah, Hamilton, I think, might be a little scared about what happened against China where her player kept getting by her, so now instead of letting her get by, she's, she may tug on a shirt and, and stick her foot in a little bit. Here's Jensen striking it low, and Scurry is right there for that. It was touched by the sweeper, Flung, who came up for the first time, Kema Flung, who plays for a club team called Ho E E. Scurry clearing it. Off a deflection, Milbert chasing it, but it's banged out of there by Leonard Terp. Julie Foudy lets it go for a United States throw-in. Milbert. Knocked away. Control, though. Foudy. Gabera. Looking to turn. Now Venturini almost had Roberts. Had the right idea. Here's Jensen. Was a forward and then was brought back into the midfield. Larson to Madsen. 14 in red for Denmark. Now wide to the right side. 12 is Anna Nielsen. Anna Nielsen looking across. Jensen miss kicks it. Milbert blasting it away in the 22nd minute. 1-0 United States on top. Their second game of this World Cup tournament. If they win this, depending on what China does in their game with Australia, the U.S. could be leading this group. Good play by the U.S. I'm not sure. Look, look to me as if they got the ball. Played inside and now off a deflection. It goes out. A little bit of confusion, but now they signal for the corner kick. And here's where you have to watch Denmark in the air. Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, De Chico now is putting Venturini right on top of the six where a lot of the balls go just to help he head him out. Nothing, nothing! Wait. Sent to the near post, headed straight up, scoring in the air, and in a pile. It was deflected wide, and everybody's looking. Some players thought it was in. That was one signal. Someone else said there was a foul inside. That was confusing. Denmark, though, will have the ball. No foul with all that contact. Yeah, and by the way the players are acting, I think they uh, were pushing and pulling on Scurry as well. Some of the Danish players either thought it was in or thought they had an infraction in the box. Knocked inside, and that one goes out. So it's still one to nothing for the United States as Denmark came close, at least we think, on the corner. As it's coming in, I can clearly hear Scurry scream for the ball. She makes a catch, and it looks as if she just lost it in the crowd. Tell you what, I, I saw the net go backward, and I saw a couple of the Danish players look like they were celebrating, so they lost sight of the ball as well, but Scurry did not, but it seemed like there was some contact in there right. above and beyond. Ball played back on the other side. Hamilton chasing it down. Matson. Oh, Hamilton, great recovery. I thought that foul was on Denmark, but it is not. It's going against Linda Hamilton. Free kick coming up for Denmark. Aneta Larsen will take it. Players in a two-man wall. Lillian Gabera for the U.S. Struck hard, center of the goal, and it's headed wide. But that time they got up in time. That was Katrine Peterson, but she headed it wide. You could see, though, how talented Denmark are. They reach those balls in the air. A reminder, we're coming to you today from Strumvalen Stadium here in Jevla, Sweden. You're watching World Cup 95 and a little bit of Brianna Scurry in goal. We're just north of Stockholm, geographically speaking. And this is the second game for the United States here in this city. We'll be heading for another venue, Kelsingborg, for the Australia game on Saturday. Straight up the middle now. Fawcett striking it off the toe, and it goes wide of the goalkeeper. This segment of the game is being presented to you commercial-free by Adidas. One of the reasons Fawcett looks so natural going up the flank there is because she used to be an outside midfielder, one of the best in the world. Larson, upfield. Tough collision that time. Peterson gets called for the foul. That doesn't make Karen Gabera's backfield any better. 
Free kick coming up for the United States. They lead it one to nothing. Julie Foudy over the ball. Lily, number 13, has the only goal for the U.S., the only goal of the game. And now Lily appears to be the one to take it. Lily striking it dead center. Headed out by Fleng. Knocked ahead now by number 11, Kroll, who has that much of the ball. She had two goals the other day against Australia. In his space, great ball for Mia Ham from Lily. Ham looking. Venturini makes a run. So does Cabrera. The pass, though, is blocked. Good play defensively by Peterson. But the U.S. shows how strong they are quickly coming up field. That one quick pass from Lily, and she disguised it well. Yeah, she did a good job. The first thing that the United States wants to do when they win the ball is see if they can play it as far forward as possible. If it's on, great. And she did. She passed it to Ham. We saw that so many times in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, but you still continue to see it on this national team. Hull, number six for Denmark. A 1-0 USA lead. 27th minute. Ball is played all the way to this left side for home. We're told that Thory Staples is warming up on the sideline. That's pretty early in the game. So we're wondering if maybe someone is hurt out there for the United States. We'll check it out. Foudy. Was looking for Milbert, and now it's taken by Christensen. Denmark will take it with Fleng. Coming back. Fleng again, sending it long. In the air, Foudy that time got the better of that ball. Julie Foudy, double teamed, back for Fawcett. She hit that off of Jensen. Joy Fawcett up the right sideline, it goes out of play. There'll be a throw in coming up for Denmark. A little bit early, isn't it, for someone to be warming up unless there's an injury? Yeah, I'm wondering if someone maybe is on the verge of, of pulling something or maybe did Chico see something that we haven't yet? Thory Staples has as much speed as anyone, not only on the U.S., but also in this entire World Cup from North Carolina State. We may see her. Coming back on the right side, Milbert. Tiffany, goals in four straight games. She's replacing Akers, and she draws that foul. Cabrera and Milbert over the ball. There you see that contact. It is a rough sport. For those who thought otherwise, here's Cabrera. Cutting inside, Gabera beating one defender. Gabera still in the dribble, toe pokes it away. Lily with a shot and it was blocked wide. And it will go, it's still not out of play. That time the rain, the muddy field, kept that one in play. And apparently it was touched by a U.S. player because it's a goal kick coming up. Gabera has got the quickest feet I've seen a, anybody with a ball at her feet. You never know where she's going, which direction she's going in. And she's always gonna be a threat whenever she has the ball. Well, she blew by number six home. She was a bit unselfish there. I thought she might have wanted to take that shot. Milbert back for it, getting help from Venturini. Tisha Venturini, no room up that middle. Good play though by Milbert to force it. Denmark sends it back long, but Hamilton was there. Now down the right side, Kroll. Looking for Madsen, number 14. Overbeck is there. Fawcett, and now Venturini. Collision there near the halfway line. A Danish player is down. That was Nielsen. They're calling that one a little bit late on Milbert. <laughs> Tiffany's one of three players, and now a yellow card was just presented, but not too clearly. I don't think that was on Milbert. If it was, she may not even be aware of it. She walked away rather quickly, and I thought they were pointing it in a different direction, so we'll try to check that out. There is some contact. Mia Hamm is the one, apparently, that was called. We'll double check that for you. Here's a chance for Denmark and a low shot that's blocked. It is Mia Hamm's caution in minute 29. Brought down, now it is Fawcett. Home is looking, no one is reading her. Roberts, oh, home looked a little frustrated there. One to nothing, USA leading it. 
here in the 31st minute. You're watching the Women's World Cup here on the Deuce. And this one will get by. Scurry will let it go because it's a goal kick coming up. But a reminder that tomorrow night on the Deuce, Arena Football, Milwaukee Mustangs in the St. Louis Stampede, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 Pacific, live on ESPN2. Tony DeChico looking on. His team up one to nothing. His team had a two-goal lead. And then China scored one with about five minutes left in the first half on Tuesday night. Ham sending it long down that left side. This is Milbrit. And it was knocked away. It goes out of play. That ball that was just sent to Milbert is exactly what DeChico's looking for. I heard him say, we need to pass some balls over the restraining line, which is the big space behind the line of defenders. With speedsters up there like me and, and Milbert, they'll beat those defenders to that ball every time. Denmark in the air at the halfway line. U.S. looking to settle it down. Lily does. Off Gabira. Karen hustles, won that ball. And it goes out, apparently, on that far sideline. We're in the 32nd minute of this first half. U.S. leading it one to nothing on a goal by Christine Lilly unofficially in the 10th minute of play. We've had a caution as well on Mia Hamm. No real testers uh, for either goalkeeper in terms of great saves so far. Throw in for Peterson. And Denmark will get to do it again. Denmark's coach, Keld Gansorn. Denmark was here in 91. They are a much improved team. They finished seventh back then. Shots on goal show Denmark on top. 6-4. At the halfway line, it swung across. Four is Terp. Home broke it up. Ham just stripped her. Mia Ham coming back in transition. Ham trying to go with speed on the outside. Just got free for the moment. Now it's knocked away from her. Picked up the other way by Jensen. Jensen will take it back. Milbert chasing. And here's Foudy. Back for Ham. Side touch now to Roberts. Roberts trying to use Gabera, now goes through. Tiffany Roberts still inside the box. Looking to send it across, and now comes away with a corner kick. Good hustle. Yeah, Roberts did a smart thing there. Gabera was in an offside position, and I, I know how tempting it is just to pass the ball to that person that's wide open in front of the goal. But she just held it, and Karen came back, and she was able to take it to goal and have a good try. She does draw the corner kick, and we're back live for that with Gabera to take it in the 33rd minute. Gabera with a strike far side, and a nice play there with Venturini in the air. The save is made by Dorte Larson. Those are tough. Yeah, one thing Venturini wants to remember is just aim for the keeper's hands and, and forget about the ball because you know that's right where the ball's going to be. In the air at the halfway line area. Foudy brought it down. The referee got in the way. Milbert couldn't get around. Milbert now with a good second effort. Now it's Gabera. Knocked back to home. Got a balance. Denmark playing with fire back there with all of those U.S. players. Chasing it, Ham. Stolen. A race for the ball and the keeper wins it. But you're playing with fire when the U.S. players go in like that. It's like fork checking in hockey. Yeah, those three front runners too, they do such a great job of defending. I remember back in 91, I think they scored half their goals by winning the ball in the other team's 18-yard box. There's the header. What a save of Venturini by Larson. That was labeled. And it would have been all as a result of that great defensive play earlier. Well, the U.S. would like to capitalize here, get a little momentum, a little surge going. Latter stages of the first half still have at least 10 minutes to go, depending on any injury time that we may get. Gabera. Now it's collected by Nielsen. Back for home. Home appears to be pretty suspect back there, the number six. That time, Gabera knocked it away. Right before that, 
Ham picked her pocket. I think uh, Ham's been going at her a few times now, and I think she's uh, playing a little cautious. I think she's worried about both players that she's been marked up against. I know I would be. Larson will put that ball back in play. She's into the game after that last save on Venturini. Off that powerful header. Venturini probably next to Michelle Akers, the second best header of the ball on this team. Yeah, and the big reason is she is fearless. A lot of people like to shy away from headers, and, and she knows that's her strength and loves every chance she gets. This segment of the game is being presented to you commercial-free by Snickers. We're in the 36th minute, first half. Women's World Cup game between the USA in white, Denmark in red and white, along with Amy Allman, a member of the 91 championship team. I'm John Paul Della Camera. USA trying to win the ball, but now Denmark sends it long. Roberts, an awkward strike, but it worked. Off Gabera, now Roberts. Chasing it down. The number 12 player is Nielsen in red for Denmark. Now home goes forward. Bends it inside. Overbeck clearing it. Gabera. And now Venturini. Venturini going long, looking for Milbert. You can hear Milbert trying to communicate verbally there with Venturini. These players read each other so well, but it's always important to call out. Yell for your teammate. Yeah, right now I've, I hear more communication than I have the entire time we've been watching United States play. Milbert helping to block it. This one goes out of play. USA are leading it by a one to nothing score. It could have been a 2 to nothing game, though, earlier. They had another great chance, and one of the best chances to score was by Venturini, whose header was saved by Larson. Venturini's just waiting. She goes up. I'm sure right now you can't tell she's got her eyes open, snaps her head through, and it's a great chance. Great save by the keeper as well. Back to live action is Venturini chasing. A great work rate for Venturini. She and Overbeck are the only two players in the team to play in all 15 games, but Overbeck is the only one to start in all 15. Mia Hams better, better be careful. She's already got one yellow card. Hey, here we go. Go, go, go. And you've already got Akers unable to play, so got to cool it. Foul on Milbert. For somebody that's not very big, Milbert has had her share of fouls in this yeah, first half. She's, she's pretty feisty, that's for yeah. sure. She's a hungry player, too. She hasn't started many games this year, but her production is very, very good. And when you get a chance to start, you do want to shine. Another foul, so it's Denmark on the free. And the referee's going to the pocket. A yellow on Foudy. So that's two yellow cards being issued today by the referee against the United States. Here's Fowdy coming in, a tackle from behind, so you can't argue with that. Yep, you can't. She stuck her foot in there. I'm not quite sure about a card, though. 39th minute is the time of that. Fleng sends it long. Look at Scurry backpedaling. She looked like she misjudged that. That came from a long distance. Yeah, if the ball's even a little bit outside the line, you, outside the 18-yard box, you want to make sure you're on your line. And that ball was clearly 10 yards, maybe 15 yards outside the 18. And Curry got, got, got caught pedaling back a little bit. She's got great leaping ability, though, so she had it covered. Several players in the air. That foul is on Linda Hamilton. Staples, by the way, was warming up before. She no longer is, but Denmark have three players loosening up on the opposite sideline. Look at Ham. From defense to offense in a flash. In the box. Plays it back. Wanted Milbert, but Jensen makes one heck of a defensive play coming through. Yeah, great individual effort by Ham to get, get down there and get open. I think Cabrera was open as well on the far side a little bit earlier. Maybe if she had slotted it through there, it would have been a little bit better. Nelson. By the way, several common names on this Denmark team. We're told none of them are related. Those are just common names like Nilsson and Larson in Denmark. Foul again on the U.S. Certainly more fouls than we saw the other night. Yeah, all the fouls seem to be looking quite the same. I mean, pe both people are just going for the ball, and if it looks, looks the ref is calling if they accidentally 
get a Denmark foot in there at the same time. Flynn will take this. Scurry's back on her line now, a little bit further than she was before. Flynn drives it hard, but wide of Brianna Scurry. She is very powerful, to say the least, and she anchors that back line. They're missing, by the way, Irene Stelling, who plays for the University of Hartford, tore some ligaments in her left foot. And she's now doing television for Denmark TV for this World Cup. But they could use her back there. USA with it. Gabera leaving it for Milbrett. Tiffany will play it all the way across. Foudy. Now to Fawcett. Joy Fawcett coming forward much more than she did in the China game. Is that by design, by the game plan, according to the defenders meeting, or is this something she sees and she goes for? I think a little bit of both. I think she has the time and space to go forward. And when she's going forward now, one of the midfielders is being extra cautious and dropping back for it. Against China, I guess they had to respect that speed too much. Yeah, and and DeChico might want to save the legs of the outside midfielders, so why not send Fawcett forward a few more times and let the outside midfielders rest a little bit? Flang will take it. Still a 1-0 USA lead. We're in the closing minutes of this first half. And the USA no doubt remembers what happened just a couple of nights ago. So they'll want to continue to shut the door here on Denmark. 1-0 is your score. Lily with the ball. She has the only goal of the game. Left side, Fawcett. Intended for Ham. Oh, she was muscled down by Peterson. The referee says no. Didn't see it. Here's Gabera. U.S. coming back. Lily looking, a right-footed shot, brought down by the keeper. That's a great save because I don't think she saw it through a screen. Yeah, great shot by Lily, a great ball by Gabera. Lily, one of those who have elevated their play today. Yeah, she put it in the only spot she could without having it go out of bounds. Great save by the keeper. She did an excellent job of keeping it out of play and getting Denmark time to regroup. I think Larson was screened by Milbert, certainly for the U.S., and one of her own players as well. And Lily went with the right foot. A lot of her shots have come from that left foot. Here's Gabera from the corner. Karen swings it inside, headed out by Christensen. A chase for the ball. Look at Ham. She couldn't get that ball, but she made sure the Danish player didn't, which is the next best thing. Throw in for Fawcett. Joy has played in every game but one this year. Right side, Foudy in the box. Right back, Venturini, the shot just went wide. Looked like she hit it off the outside of her foot and got a bad bend of the ball. Yeah, I think the surface uh, actually made the ball skip a little bit past Venturini, and I think she's expecting to hit it right in front of her, and it scored it out a little bit to her left. Not, not far off. I think she wanted it to hit it when it was right underneath her body, and it squirted out, and that way... You know, her foot was forced to go wide of the goal. You could read her lips, too, afterwards. She said good ball. She wanted to do better with that. She liked the pass. Jensen. Almost beat two players. Roberts wins it cleanly. That's a great job without fouling there. Here's Ham. Blocked by Christensen. Chased back by Overbeck. Carla off the right foot. Holm is back for it. She lets it go out. It's Denmark's ball on the throw-in. Fleng thought about playing it back to the keeper, but Gabera had that shut off. Crow. Now it's Fawcett. Overbeck, straight up the middle. Julie Foudy. Now to Milbrett. Blocked by Peterson. Here she comes. Katrine Peterson putting it in a space for Crow. Three players there for the U.S. All in the same area. Now it's Lily. Lily has it blocked. Not just because she scored, but Lily is one of the better players, if not the best player on the field so far in this first half. She's done very well in all facets of the game. Yeah, it looks like she's the one right now that's chosen to step up and, and take the spot of, of Akers as far as leading the team on. Straight up the middle, Jensen was blocked, but a good bounce for Denmark. Nielsen, left footing it inside, right to Scurry. And apparently there was an onside that time as the number 14 player, Matson held up her run enough to be onside. That was dangerous, though, with the wet field. 
Yeah, uh, Scurry did a good job of waiting for it, but it would have been a little bit better if she would attack, attacked it more and, and got the ball a little bit earlier. Throw-in coming up for the United States. We're in injury time. Michelle Akers looking on. You know, she scores almost at a goal a game clip. No woman can say that. No man can say that. And she's had five goals in five games against Denmark. So Denmark's happy she's not out in the field. Hopefully she'll be back for the quarterfinals next week. At least that's her hope as well. But don't expect her for the Australia game on Saturday. Ball will be put back in play now by Denmark. Larson. We are in injury time. Our stadium clock has been turned off here in Yevla, Sweden. Set long by the keeper, Larson. Foudy to Gabera. Karen Gabera, a lot more of the ball today than she had against China. And Lily was brought down, a foul, and watch out here for this free kick. Dangerous spot. This is... Uh, a strength of Lillian. She wants to kick it. She wanted to take it right there. And the referee got in the way, allowing the wall to be set up. They wanted that quick free kick. Well, Lily's a left footer. She's probably going to try to bend it around and play it behind the wall, which is the side of the goal that the keeper's not in charge of guarding. Of course, she's in charge of guarding the whole goal, but right now the wall is covering the left side of the goal. Lily ready to strike. Left puts it in, and it goes wide of goal. Well within her range, but that's not the way she wanted to send that through. Still a 1-0 lead for the USA, thanks to Lily's earlier goal. That's it. First half over here in Yevla, Sweden. On a goal by Christine Lilly, the United States has a 1-0 lead here in Sweden. We'll watch the goal and enjoy it back home. Best. Welcome back, everyone, to Yevla, Sweden. We're here at halftime of our game between the United States and Denmark, with the United States leading it by a score of one to nothing. Christine Lilly has the only goal. We'll take a look at the standings now here in this Women's World Cup. And you'll find the that Germany the and the Sweden team. are in a tie for first place. In fact, in their group, all of the groups, all of the teams in that group are all tied. Each has won one game and each has lost one. In the other group, Group B, you would see that Norway is on top. England also has the same situation. They've won a game. And then you have Canada and then Nigeria. And we told you earlier about Group C situation with Denmark being on top. And then the United States, China behind them, followed by Australia. Stick with us. We've got a lot more to come your way from Yevla, Sweden. The USA are on top at halftime, one to nothing. Have you been turned down for a home call? Welcome back, everyone, to Yevla, Sweden. Your score, one to nothing. United States are leading Denmark here at halftime of this World Cup game being seen here on the deuce. Welcome back, everyone, to Yevla, Sweden. I'm John Paul Della Camera. Yesterday was an off day, so I had a chance to go walking with assistant coach April Heinrichs. April, in 1995, the women's national team is getting all kinds of exposure. What was it like back in 1986 when you started playing for the national team? No one knew who we were where we were playing, what players were on the team, that there was even a U.S. national team that played soccer. Uh, I don't think that the general public was aware that was a, there was a team or that uh, there were potential superstars on it, like a Michelle Aker Stahl and, uh, at, at that time. And at the same time, no one knew if we were any good. Did you ever think that women's soccer would reach this level this quickly? The game has changed so much in nine years. I can't believe the evolution that has occurred. The players are more sophisticated technically and tactically. The game itself and team tactics has evolved in a manner that is very, very difficult for good teams to win all those games. Tell us about the kinds of sacrifices that the women have had to make in order to see the game grow as it has. I was never a believer in, in the fact that we made sacrifices. I don't use that word, I don't use that terminology for what I've done over the years with soccer. I would use the term of 
This is what I've always wanted to do. And these are choices I'm making. I've prioritized my ambitions, and this is what I want to do. And there's no sacrifice involved. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but here with the national team. What's it been like for you, April, now coming back to this team? You played for them in 91, and now you're an assistant coach. I'm delighted to be with the team. I'd set cones for these guys. I'd carry water bottles. I would uh, do whatever I needed to do to help out because the players are such special people, and the coaching staff is a wonderful staff to be around. Uh, I feel very honored that at such a young age, someone would invite me, Tony would invite me to be back and, and say to me that, April, you have something to contribute. We want you as a part of the staff. Look, a MasterCard won't make you different or unique, okay? Actually, maybe it will. And welcome back, everyone, to Strumvalen Stadium here in Yevla, Sweden. We're here at halftime. The United States leading Denmark one to nothing. You're watching the Women's World Cup here on the Deuce, along with Amy Alman. I'm John Paul Della Camera. The first half, Amy turned into, I guess, the Christine Lilly show. She played strong and was one of the better players in the field, and not just because she scored the only goal. It's nice to know that Lilly can step up like that. She's always been a solid player, but in the goal, she does a great job of, of letting the ball stay in front of her, and as easy as she made it look... It's very difficult. That was an in-swinger. The ball is going away from her and toward the goalkeeper. And besides scoring that goal, Christine Lilly also did her usual great job in defense here in the first half. So it's a one to nothing score right now. United States leading over Denmark. We hope you're enjoying the Women's World Cup. We're going to switch you from women's soccer to men's soccer here on ESPN because coming up on Sunday, it's U.S. Cup soccer, Nigeria versus the United States, a 2 p.m. start Eastern time, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Here at halftime, the USA is leading Denmark. One to nothing. You've probably seen commercials for siding from... ESPN 2's coverage of the 1995 Women's World Cup is being brought to you by Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. By Beachwood Aids Budweiser, it's always been true, this Bud's for you. And by MasterCard, it's more than a credit card, it's smart money. Welcome back, everyone, to Yevla, Sweden, along with Amy Allman. I'm John Paul Della Camera. We're getting ready for the second half kickoff. We'll check it out, see if there are any substitutions out there in the field. I'm looking down quickly on the U.S. side, and I see no changes right now. USA will want to have another strong half and pick up three points if they can. It would give them four points, and depending on what China does with Australia today, the USA could have the top spot in Group C. We're underway. Second half. USA on top, thanks to Lily's goal. This segment of the game is being presented commercial-free by Budweiser. Foudy has it blocked. Taken away now by Denmark. On the left side of the field. They try to play it along up the middle. Jensen was there. Now Lilly chases it down. And it's cleared back the other way. Milber will chase it. Denmark with it. They've made a change. Aschel said number 19 is in the lineup. Here's Ham. Mia Ham sending it long, looking for Gabera. Karen Gabera will catch up to it. Nice cut of the ball, right side, drills it, but it's wide. But Karen Gabera that time was thinking nothing but offense, and that was nice to see her do that and take that initiative. Yeah, best part about when she got the ball was the fact that she used the defender's momentum to, to beat the defender. Just went one way, and the defender hadn't even planted her feet yet, and she went the other way. What do you think the message was from Tony DiCicco at halftime? They had the one nothing lead. I think he, he probably wanted the players to continue what they were doing. It seems like uh, the United States is finally playing their style and playing it to the forwards, and the forwards are having chances to complete some passes, and they're just not shooting at, at every single chance they get. U.S. team playing with more discipline today, certainly, than they had in that China game. All of the players that we spoke to felt badly about the game and even said, we played bad, didn't we? And it was refreshing to see that. They weren't blaming anyone else, and they knew China was a good team, but they knew they let them back in. Roberts will send it back the other way for Hamilton. Venturini looking. She got hit. She's still down. Play is continuing, though. Venturini slow to get up. Overbeck communicating back there with Scurry. Overbeck will send it long. 
And right over me, a hand went Peterson. It's getting too physical out there. And frankly, I think a lot of calls are being missed right now that were not being missed the first game against China. Now, granted, this game is more physical, but that was over the back. She got hit in the head right yeah, before I, that it was Venturini. Yeah, I don't think there's any chance of Denmark even winning that ball. You can hear that from the bench. Tough, Mia, be tough. And she will be. But that's probably the last player in this team that you want to have angry because when she plays with that fiery emotion, there's almost no stopping her. Right. I bet you right now, these next couple minutes, they're actually going to try to play the ball to Ham. You can see it in her eyes. But she's just focused. That's it. She's like a Magic Johnson or a Michael Jordan. They want the ball. Here's Lily. Straight up the middle. Try to play it for either Ham or Venturini, but neither one reacted in that space. Taken out of the back by Denmark. A 1-0 USA lead here in Yevla, Sweden. USA will play Australia Saturday here on the Deuce. Clear it all the way back. Overbeck is there. Fawcett and Hamilton are also deep. Ham, great fake to get that ball. Mia Ham in a space for Christine Lilly. Lilly inside the box. The shot, what a save off the left leg or right leg of the keeper Larson. A brilliant save, but what a pass from Ham to Lilly. Back up the right side comes Jensen. USA coming back with numbers. Jensen lifting it. Scurry was coming out and got it in the short hop. Jensen did well from transition that time for Denmark. Back up field now, it's Mia Ham. Ham going now for Milbert onside. Milbert breaking, has Cabrera the shot, and a score, Milbert! Tiffany Milbert makes it 2 to nothing. United States. She has scored goals in five straight games. sides now gets the ball and does the exact right thing she runs at the keeper and waits for that keeper to make one step so if you can see it the keeper's moving just a little bit forward and there's nothing the keeper can do ball goes to me and she dribbles just right at the keeper that's the only thing she can do keepers moving forward keeper would have done a little bit better if she just would have stayed on her line that's a low angle of tiffany milbert on the dribble coming back in the live action she draws the foul. The adrenaline's got to be pumping for Tiffany Milbert from Mia Hamm. Played across, and Larson is there. Now, Milbert really made that look easy, and it's a lot tougher than it looks. Played all the way back now. Overbeck chasing it. So Mia Hamm gets another assist. Had one the other night as well. The United States has got to be saying, oh, gosh, we're ahead by two goals. <laughs> That's right, from the other night. Scurry. Sends it long. Gabera looking for it. I remember what you said about the two-goal lead. We often talk about it as broadcasters, and people say uh, sometimes that it can be like a cliche, but you hear it all the time, and the players will tell you that as well. Jensen will play it, and will get it back to number nine player for Denmark. Helle Jensen. The Milbert goal in the 50th minute from Mia Hamm. Denmark trying to come back in this one. Quickly, defense leading to offense. Inside the box, knocked away by Overbeck. You know, it looks like the United States is doing the same thing they did against China. They just scored a goal. Denmark's obviously going to come out as hard as they can. They need to just drop the ball back and slow it down a little bit and take the wind out of, out of Denmark because you just, you know, made them a little bit mad there with that second goal. Well, Tony DeChico is hoping that a lesson was learned, I'm sure, by his team in that game with China. Mia Hamm, right side, trying to get around Peterson. Peterson wins the ball, but look at Hamm, still chasing and got a piece of it. What an effort on that far sideline. And now on that far sideline, we've got a player down. That was Roberts, but she's okay. U.S. Cup Soccer, Nigeria versus the United States, Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, and it will be live on ESPN from Foxborough, Massachusetts, Nigeria. You probably saw it during the World Cup. They were a very impressive side for the United States. Marcelo Balboa should get his 100th cap. Thomas Dooley expected to play. Tab Ramos, Roy Wegerly, and Kobe Jones, among others. 
Mia Hamm, ready, right in front of the American flag. A lot of U.S. fans here. Played inside the box. Larson lost it, but no one was there close enough to get it home, and that could have been because of the wetness of the field. Yeah, and it was a lofted one, and those are really hard to time. The higher they are, the less amount of time you have to catch it at its highest point. Fawcett's throw, headed away by Christensen. Ashelson, back to Flung. Kama Flung's pass, headed down by Hamilton. Now it's Jensen. Look at the run Foudy made just there on the defensive end. Foul was called, though, and it's Denmark's ball. Julie Foudy, a very busy lady. Busy that time in the foul, but I was going to say busy because she's going to be getting married later. She's going to go to medical school. She's going to play in the Olympics. Uh, I don't know where she finds time. And playing here in the World Cup. It's a busy summer for Julie Foudy chasing Jensen. Great tackle without fouling. Peterson will take it now for Denmark in the 54th minute. Now it's the USA with Gabera trying for it. If you're just joining us, Denmark are in red and white. United States in the predominant white. And it's the USA on top, 2 to nothing. Lily and Milbert are your goal scorers. Foudy, great dribbling skills. Great poise on the ball. Yeah, that's something they didn't have against the China, China game. Milbert. Back to Fawcett. Ashelson chasing it. Milbert knocks it down and gets behind the defense. Milbert cutting it for Gabera. Gabera in the dribble. Stays with it. Looked like she had lost it and then lost it there. You know what she was trying to do? She was trying to find Mia on the right side. Yeah, Mia made a great run. Michelle in that same situation probably would have tried to crack a shot, but Karen feels much more comfortable going at, at the defenders on the dribble. Look at Lily with a turnaround off that left foot. Just a bit too high. But she is one of the players that has really stepped up her game in this one. She has scored one goal, but she's had a couple of other chances, while at the same time making her solid defensive contribution. Very tough on D, and if you notice, a lot of the shots Lily's getting off are right in front of the goal, so she's all over the field. She hasn't just stuck to the outside of the field. Larson, the goalkeeper. She had a 2 to nothing shutout against the United States, but she was also in goal for the 7 nothing game. I think one of the players that was warming up got on the field of play and the referee sent the linesman over to warn her while that ball was being kicked at least that's the body language I was reading and now the referee's coming in to spot the ball down he's got to present a card after all this he has to that's going on the goalkeeper I didn't think it was the goalkeeper initially that he was miffed at I thought it was one of the players on that sideline but Larson will get a yellow card whether she agrees or not and you can tell she doesn't Dorothy Larson, 25-year-old keeper, sends it long. Headed back by the U.S. Now Denmark will take it. Christensen, intended for Nielsen. Denmark will get it back with Terp. Right side, Ashelson. Partially blocked. Lily was in there again defensively. Here's Venturini. Milbred heads for open space. Gabera takes on one player. Christensen pushed her, I thought, from behind. The well, play continues. Ashelson. Venturini there defensively. Terp straight up the middle. Finding her own space. Finding the seam. Playing it through to Metzen. And Roberts with speed gets over there. And Scurry was going over there anyway to cut it off. But a great job by Terp. And if you don't see anyone closing you down, keep going. Yeah, it looks like a Terp had Venturini a little bit on the speed there. The referee stopping play. Are we going to get a substitution? Or timeout? Timeout has been called. So we didn't have any in the first half of play, but this has been the timeout World Cup. It's being used as an experiment. You may see it in 1998. I guess a lot depends on how this one goes. And now the two teams have a chance to talk it over. You've seen it now in a few situations. What do you think about it? So far, in, in all the games that I've seen, it seemed to have some sort of effect. I mean, with the Sweden-Germany game last night, we saw Germany come back. You know, they were down two goals, and after a timeout, every timeout, a, a goal has been scored since then. U.S. players getting a liquid refreshment break as we listen to Mia Hamm talk about her changing role. 
I have a little bit more responsibility. Um, I'm look uh, more as, as a role player now, and uh, that's great. That's something that I've always wanted, that kind of responsibility and, and being a personality player, something that I don't think I gained in college until my junior and senior year, and it's something that I wanted to transfer over to the international game, you know, to be a marked player, to, to have that that responsibility that if a goal needs to be scored or if a ball needs to be run down, that I could do it. Mia Hamm wants the responsibility. She takes it on. And, and you've got to respect and admire players like that because sometimes in all sports, players don't want to be the one on the free throw line to take the last shot or take the penalty kick, and she does. Especially in pressure situations like that, there's always players that, that like to say they want it, but when you look out onto the field, there's only a few players that are actually asking for the ball no matter what kind of pressure they have on them. And you've got to like that as a teammate, knowing somebody wants the ball. Yeah, it helps so much, too, to know that someone out, out there is confident in your abilities. There is Mia Hamm, second, or actually tied for second place with Karen Gabera in terms of caps and goals. This segment of the game is being presented to you commercial free by Snickers. USA now will put the ball back in play after that timeout. You are allowed one per team per half, so you can have as many as four in a game. And so far that first half went by without one. That was our first one there. Here's Denmark coming back. Right side. The shot taken misses the near post by quite a bit. The shot was taken by Anna Nielsen. Last time that these two clubs met, it was Denmark winning it 2 to nothing. But the U.S. players were saying it came right after they had that physical five-week training camp. Yeah, I think Coach Chico was just working on their fitness, and they had been together for a long time, doing double days, uh, testing their legs out, just seeing where they were as far as fitness goes to see how far they needed to go before this 95 World Cup. This ball goes out of play. An interesting note of the 12 shots taken by the United States, Christine Lilly has taken half. Throw in on the far sideline. Katrine Peterson, only 18 years of age. A lot of very young players on this team from teenage to early 20s. Denmark could be one of those rising European powers in the years ahead in women's soccer. This one is cleared out of play. Throw in coming up. Anna Nielsen chasing it down. Denmark called that last time up. Obviously talking about ways to get back and get into this game. Goal differential, remember, is a category for breaking ties, so even if your team loses, you want to score goals. And right now, it's a 2-0 game for the United States. Goals by Lilly and Milbrit. Throw in deep in U.S. territory. Denmark lofting it. Brought down by Christensen. And on the short hop, Brianna Scurry is right there. She's established herself as the number one keeper for this team. Started 12 of the last 13 games from last year. Really, she was an unknown player except in the collegiate ranks and took over as number one and got 10 out of the first 14 starts this year. So she's clearly become the number one keeper. Foul is going to be called. Denmark will have it. Two to nothing. United States are leading in this one and looking better than they did against China. Some of the Danish fans, painted faces. Of course, it's a short ferry ride from Copenhagen here to Sweden. So you expected it to have more of a, instead of a neutral site, you expected the U.S. to be more the road team, certainly the Denmark. Melbourne in a space. Look at this run by Mia Hamm. But it was knocked away. But she came from out of nowhere. She was most definitely in an onside position. She reads the game so well. Intended for Gabera, cut off by Ashelson. Ben Torini coming in. So much familiarity on this team. They play so many games together, but also factor in Ben Torini, North Carolina, Lily, North Carolina, Ham, North Carolina, three key players, three offensive positions, and it helps to make everyone click. Ben Torini. Overbeck will clear it back, and it goes out of play. Yeah, especially playing together in college where you have so many games in such a, a short period of time. 
helps even just reading the body language of a player, not necessarily when to pass, but knowing when you're going to hold your run and when you're not going to hold your run. We've already seen, especially with Lillian Ham, several plays where they just know where each other's going. Ashelson cut off. There's Lily again. Christy Lily's got this whole left sideline to work with. Two players chase her down. She tried to play it across to switch it to Ham. Instead, Venturini holds, fakes, try to slide it through to Ham. So unselfish when she had a chance to drill it. Off Fawcett's foot, Denmark tried to come back. What a reach in by Julie Foudy to stop a potential numerical advantage. And now instead the USA could have a numerical advantage as Robert sneaks in. Tiffany down the right side. Try to cross it, she will get a corner kick. How quickly the game changes in a bounce or two. Twelve ten, the edge in terms of shots on goal. And we told you earlier that Lily has half of those. We really do a, have to do a graphics panel on just Lily's shots. From the corner. Set inside, and it's caught. I was surprised Larson didn't jump too much for that. She, I thought she put herself in a pretty vulnerable spot. Yeah, I think she almost cleared a credit card there. <laughs> Overbeck almost got her head on that. A little bit higher, and it could have been a goal. Hamilton striking it up the middle. Christensen trying to go along. USA leading it 2 to nothing. If you're just joining us here on the Deuce, along with Amy Allman, a member of the 91 championship team, I'm John Paul Della Camera. Thanks for watching the Women's World Cup. Milbrit, 16, she has one of the goals. Keeping a goal scoring streak alive. Replacing the injured Michelle Akers. Foudy, a lot more touches for the US than against China. Spreading the offense around a lot more and a lot better. It's nice to see the US possessing the ball Especially when you know what it can do to the other team and they can use, when they feel like they're chasing the ball and chasing the ball They'll start to get frustrated the more frustrated you get the more you want to dive in and that's what the United States wants Denmark to do right there That was a clinic. I can't even tell you how many touches that was Probably close to ten and they use the entire length and width and here they come with a cross from Lily And they could have had a chance with Gabera now Gabera goes down, but she's right back up But that's what you want to do spread the ball all around make them chase that's not what they did against China. In fact, China had most of the ball possession. Played inside. They were looking for Lily, who I thought was elbowed down by Nilsson. In the corner, Milbert with Ashelson. Tiffany Milbert wins that ball, then it's knocked away. A lot of credit to Milbert. Small in stature, big in this game. Denmark wants to make a substitution if they can get the referee's attention. Milbert is listed at 5'2", Michelle Akers at 5'10", so you lose eight inches there in the air, but Tiffany Milbert, you could measure her heart here today, and the performance she has come up with has been a big plus for this team. Defensively, too, as well as offensively. She's, she's done a great job of hounding the red shirts. And here she comes again on the left side, trying to bring it inside on Christensen, who makes the block. Miscommunication there. Denmark almost gave away a corner. And instead, they give away a throw, and so they've got him rattled back there. They're still trying to make that substitution, and now apparently that will be the case. Crow will come out. Hansen, Christina Hansen will come in. Got to ask you what the problem was with Crow. I know she's a young player, but she scored twice the other day, and she hardly touched the ball in this game. What was the U.S. doing to her? You know, no one ever gives enough credit to Joy Fawcett. Every, game in, game out, she's in charge of marking the best player in the world as far as the forwards are concerned. And like you said, you don't notice she's not a flashy player. You don't see her make a lot of moves. All she does is get the job done. And I know when I'm a goalkeeper, that's the kind of defender I want back there. Well, she took Crow right out of the game. And now Linda Hamilton will leave, and Thori Staples will make her World Cup debut. Well, after all that warming up, it's nice to see Thori out there. She did warm up the other day against China, didn't get to play, but now she comes in for her first taste of World Cup competition as Lily gets ready to throw it in. Gabara over the back, pretty much, of Ashelson. Foul on Karen Gabara. I'll say that's a little bit of a foul there. It was more like a rodeo ride, I thought. <laughs> Cleared up field now by Denmark. Oh, 
Jensen. I think even Karen Gabrera would laugh at that if she saw that on the replay. Yeah, the one thing I like about that is you don't see many forwards fouling just to win the ball back. You usually see him fouling just to score, so we'll let her get a few of those in. Mia Hamm coming back on the attack. Great on the dribble. To Roberts in the middle. Christensen to try to cut her off. Gabera doing some chasing. Karen Gabera, I think, put a lot more pressure on herself today, knowing that Michelle Akers would be out of the lineup, knowing that she had to go forward, even though the back, I think, is still bothering her at least somewhat, although you can't tell from today. Here's a turn for Mia Hamm. Right across, she wanted Venturini, and it's blocked. The great. Tar Heels try to work together again. Yeah, great idea. That's the only place Mia Hamm could have put the ball, and there were so many reds back there, there wasn't much space, but it's a great idea. Nothing much else she could do with that. USA will have it. There is Venturini, who could have been the benefactor of that. And now Ham will go over there to take it. Mia Ham spotting it. There's Flynn, the sweeper in front. A lot of communication. Mia Ham with a corner. An in swinger off the left foot was cleared away by Peterson. And it goes towards that far sideline, rolling out of play in the 69th minute. Still 2 to nothing in favor of the United States. So Staples is in for Hamilton, and this gives the United States some speed and also maybe part of Tony DeChico's strategy with the six games potentially in 13 days. Tony knows you could want to rest some people. You're playing again on Saturday. Yeah, considering you know that, that Brazil had a whole month to play seven games, and... In the United States, if they're going to go all the way, you know, only have 13 days, it'd be nice to rest some legs. Participating in bringing you today's game is Nike. Nielsen will bring it back. You're allowed three substitutions, including the goalkeeper in the Women's World Cup. So we may see some others. Milbert. It's always a tough call for a coach. You want to keep everything in a rhythm, but you also want to think about what lies ahead. And perhaps when Tony feels this one might be safe, we might see a change. And got to use the word might again. Yeah, what a scary feeling just to know that, that you're up now, but things could change. You saw Milbert moment. there? Like you were talking about before, getting in on the defensive end as well as the offense. Number 16 has had a magnificent day. Just got the dirty uniform to prove it. So does everyone there in white. Flung sends this one long. It's still rising. You know, that's about the third time that, that Denmark has tried that. And the ball is so far away that even with the wall, the goalkeeper has a lot of time to make a decision and see it. I think they'd be a little bit more successful if they tried to play, play the ball into that space and run onto it. Denmark's Watch. coach, Kel Ganshorn, can't like what he's seeing in this one. But I'm not sure he could fault his team. I think this is just a great effort, greater effort for the United States playing like the team that we know that they are. Yeah, they've definitely found a rhythm, and I think they're just playing a little bit more relaxed. First game, remember, 1991, you were there. It was a 3 to nothing lead against Sweden, and they had to hang on to win it 3-2. to two. Something about those first games. Set long by Terp. Brought down by Holm. Try to cut it inside. Now Jensen, what a block. Amazing for Tiffany Roberts. Here's Milbert. Great dribbling. Now has it intercepted after that buildup. Home, blocked by Thory Staples. And now it's Roberts. With Roberts and Staples back there, it's going to be tough to get by those two. This segment of the game is being presented to you commercial free by MasterCard. 2 0, United States are leading. Here's Fawcett. Playing it across. Now to Foudy. Right side, here's Staples. Roberts getting by. Play on, says the referee who spotted that foul, but what with the advantage? Roberts brought down to that far side. Peterson, the crowd on that side thought she had the ball go out. She could be out, but the ball can't, but the crowd thought she went with what the ball went out. Overbeck. Now it's Christine Lilly. If you want to talk tempo, this is a pace that the USA is dictating. Right. 
Two to nothing is your score. United States are leading it thanks to goals by Lilly and Milbrett. Gabera and Ham have helped out with assists. This is the second game for the United States in the Women's World Cup, along with Amy Allman. I'm John Paul Della Camera. USA looking for their first win after that 3-3 tie with China. Hope you're enjoying today's coverage here on the Deuce. Ashelson now plays it back. Now on the left side, Peterson has it tackled away. Roberts in there. I thought there was a handball. So did the referee. And now does he have something else? A substitution. Milbert is going to leave. We're trying to see a change for the United States. So Milbert will leave and it looks like oh, number six, Debbie Keller has checked in. Well, that's a number change. This is 21. Normally, at least according to the program here, but she's number six. No wonder she looked different. The U.S. didn't have a number six. So Debbie Keller gets a taste of World Cup competition. Denmark with it. Trailing. Two to nothing. Debbie Keller's third international. She's been training with the team since January of 1995. Another product of the University of North Carolina. And there is Peterson who has just checked in as well. Christina Peterson for Denmark. Nelson. Ready to put this one in play. Referee told her to tuck her shirt in. <laughs> and some of the fans were applauding that. It's played inside. Headed away by the United States. Not out of danger yet. Lily. Brought back. Blocked down. Julie Foudy. Straight up the middle. Keller's touch. Gabera. Intended for Venturini. You recognize Keller with the only clean uniform in the field. Probably for either side. Wearing number six. Tony DiCicco probably knows that you said before, Milbert hasn't really had to play the full 90, and with Acres not expected back for Saturday, you figure Milbert definitely will be in the starting lineup again, so why not rest her? Yeah, I think uh, Milbert did a great job, too. I, I think knowing that, you, you have the idea that you might want to save yourself and not go for it and try to stay the whole 90, but she gave it all she had and was ready to come out. Coming up later tonight on Sports Night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific Time, 90 minutes of up-to-date scores, news, music videos, and much more. Join Bill Pito and Stuart Scott. And right now, the United States has wisely, I think, called a timeout. We're in the 76th minute. The United States has always talked about being an offensive team, Amy, but they've also talked about their defensive formation. That's... The difference in this team that you talked about at the start, and Tony DeChico wants to make sure they're in the right defensive form and scheme here in this latter stages of the second half. Yeah, I think when they go back out on the field, you'll notice also that in the earlier stages of the game, the three forwards were attacking really quickly and trying to defend maybe at their 18-yard line, and now they're just going to drop back a little bit, and they're probably not going to pick them up until they're closer to the midfield. Just to, just to stall, maybe Denmark will pass the ball around in the back a little bit. Tony DeChico replaced Anson Dorrance as the head coach of this USA national team, and the change occurred just about a year ago. We talked to Carla Overbeck about the difference in the coaches. Basically, the transition was very smooth. Um, I'm personally a very good friend of Anton's, and so it was, it was harder for some of the veterans that had been around and known him for a while. But Tony is a great, he's a great coach, he's a great person, um, he has a huge heart, and basically we want to play for each other, but we want to play for him too, and that's, I think that's what you need in a coach, and he's, he's doing a great job, and he's done a great job this, the past few months. Carl Overbeck speaking about Tony DeChico, the head coach of the U.S. national team, who was the goalkeeping coach, and I guess your coach, your goalkeeping coach. He taught me everything I know. <laughs> Tony in the huddle in the middle there. That's why we can't give you a good shot of him right now. There's a lot of talk going on there, though. When you're in a situation like that, obviously the head coach is talking, but 
You've got other leaders. April Heinrichs talked about that as well, mentioning players like a Julie Foudy. So there's more than one leader. It's not just a captain on this team. Yeah, and I think they all know when it's their time to speak out and when it's their time to be quiet. They've been around each other for so long now that everyone kind of knows the role. I noticed Carla at the beginning of the game, the United States team, I've never seen him look so nervous. And she started running around and high-fiving him a little bit. Next thing you know, Bruce Springsteen was playing on the PA and it kind of got him going. So definitely she's a great captain. Back in the action after that last timeout, which was called by the United States. So each team has used their allotted one in this half. USA leading it two to nothing. Goals by Lilly and Milbert. Axelson here in minute 78. China is playing Australia as we speak in another game that's going on. Actually, there are four games today in the busiest day so far of the Women's World Cup 95. Holm has it blocked. Roberts. And at the halfway line, that is Ham that is brought down. Here is Ham on the push by Christensen. Each team playing three games in the first round, so the USA will play Australia on Saturday. The top two teams in each group will advance, and that's about all we can tell you, along with the next best two third-place records. There are so many different scenarios for the United States. They may come back here and play in the quarterfinals, or go to two other cities and play against uh, at least three, possibly four different teams. So too many different scenarios to speculate on that right now, but... Right now, the USA just wants to finish as high as they can in their group and then let the chips fall. Lily's throw in now for Gabera. Off the double team. You could hear it sounded like Lily or maybe Keller saying just hold it there. They could eat up time. They don't mind that. They'd rather do that than lose the ball. Yeah, with Karen there with the ball at her feet, she can hold it for... All day, practically, if she wanted to. Larson will put it back in play. Two to nothing, United States leading. Here in minute 80. Foudy in the air. Now the United States has been doing so well in the air, especially with the height advantage the Denmark team has. They have won well over 80% of all the head balls. Gabera now to Staples. Thoria on this near side being pressured. Stays with it. And now, jockeying for position. Look at Jensen with that international experience blowing by. Jensen stays with it. A left-footed shot. I'll tell you, that was a well-taken shot, but it went over the bar. But she had the angle. She had it lined up great off the dribble. Yeah, she's one of those players, too, that she's an awesome player, and then she'll sleep for a little bit. The United States may tend to forget about her and lay off for a little bit. And next thing you know, she's coming right at him again. Dory Staples from North Carolina State still has a couple of years of eligibility left. She was bothered by an ankle injury because last year during the Chiquita Cup, she was actually a starter and then has not been able to reclaim that position. Linda Hamilton starts there instead. Mia Hamm, number nine, and wide in a space for Debbie Keller. Keller chasing, number six, cutting it back for Venturini. Great job in the tackle. Flung made that play. The sweeper, that's her first real big play of this game. Throw it on that far sideline. Venturini was shaking her head because she slowed her run down a little bit. If she would have kept running right on through that, she may have gotten a piece of it. Played inside for Keller. Holding it. Trying to give it back up. USA will try to send it across, but it's headed out of the box by Peterson. Straight up the middle. 20, Christina Peterson. Again, they are not related. Roberts. With that speed, but can't get by Flung, who read it well from her sweeper spot. This one goes out, and they're indicating goal kick. Roberts is another one that's just been down, up and down that field all day. First ball, away. She's taking correspondence courses in her senior year. We are told she will graduate on time, and she'll play for Anson Dorrance at North Carolina in the fall. Mia Hamm. Brought down by Ashelson. Mia looking back towards the referee again, but she's got to be careful with that one yellow card already. Doesn't want to have to sit out a game, especially with Akers not expected back 
until the quarterfinals. Inside the box, it's cleared out. The segment of the game is presented commercial free by Adidas. Foudy to the right side. Roberts. Foudy from Keller. They are so patient here in the second half. I know the other day, a lot of people, I talked to the U.S. players, and I said, did you feel comfortable with a 3-1 to lead? And a lot of them said, to be honest, not really, not the way the game was going. I think they'd have a different answer here today because of the way this game is going. Yeah, even if, uh, you know, things happen, the one thing you know that Chico had to be saying was, let's keep the shutout, just for confidence building and for them to know that going into the next game and the rest of the World Cup that this is something that they can do. At the halfway line, we've got a foul on Venturini. Quick restart, that's too quick, says the official. Tisha Venturini, an all-ACC player, won the Herman Trophy and the Mack Trophy in the same year. Won a scoring title as well, 1991 at Carolina. In fact, that was her freshman year. Be a throw-in coming up for the U.S. Gabara will let it go for Lilly. USA will manipulate the clock as best they can as well. Christine Lilly's throw in. It cut by two defenders. Here's Mia Hamm with speed on the left. Oh, Fleng made a great play, but Hamm will get the rest of the ball. Mia holding it on the right foot. Sends it across. Nobody there close enough. It was intended for Gabera. That had to be the goalkeeper's worst nightmare, seeing two defenders blown by by the ball and then by Mia Hamm. Yeah, Fling especially. I mean, she's de Mia is definitely faster than she is, but she is so leggy, that number three, that I think Hamm thought she had her beat, and then one of her legs just came out and got the ball. Terp gives it back to Fling. Hammer Fling gives it up. She's 28 years of age. One of the older players actually out in the field right now along with Jensen, 26. Throw-in coming up for the United States who have made a couple of substitutions. Tony DeChico looking a lot better than he did the other day. That's what coaching can do. And results, right side, Gabera. Blocked by Peterson and Karen brings her down. And I was looking to see if the referee was going to the pocket, but he's not. Straight up the middle. Denmark on the attack. Staples is back. And did that just to relieve the pressure. Throw in Denmark deep in U.S. territory. You can hear them. Push them back. That sounds like Scurry saying that. Push them back. Here it goes inside. Over one, not two. Christensen lost it. And the USA gets a break there. That was a nice setup. The linesman may have had the flag up at this near side. We didn't see her from our angle. The Danish bench looking on. Totally different than playing against Australia where they won five to nothing the other day. Australia, though, a younger, lesser experienced team making their debut in the World Cup. They still have to play against China. Denmark does. Christensen, number 10, up the middle. We're in the 86th minute, nearing the end of this. The USA leading at 2 to nothing. Goals by Lilly and Milbrit. Peterson's pass. Christensen back for Peterson, number 5 in red. Slots it back. Christensen shooting it long. And this one goes out of play. Jensen has snuck up there, and now Fawcett's marking her. She's one of the uh, Denmark's better players by far, and I'd uh, be curious to see if they just start hitting, every time they get the ball, just start looking for her. One goal in each half, Lily in the 10th minute of the first half, and in the second half, it was Milbert in the 50th minute, and now Gabera will leave. And Sarah Raffinelli, who just celebrated her birthday, will come on. There's Sarah. Great career at Stanford. She celebrated birthday number 23 on June the 7th. From Piedmont, California, the all-time leading goal scorer at Stanford with 59. 
Staples with a knock. All the way to the far side, it goes out of play. Time running out here on Denmark, 87th minute. Denmark in a rush. As well they should be. Again, goal differential, one of the tiebreakers, so you want to try and score in these games. USA right now in a good spot up here, 2-0, and still having to play against Australia, the weak sister of their group, and probably in this whole tournament along with Nigeria. This one goes out of play. Throw in for the United States. Things are going their way, and they're at a comfort level right now. Yeah, I think, I think most of the players finally realize what it takes. I mean, the, earlier there was a situation when the ball was cleared out and there was no United States players to, to finish it. It was because there were six or seven back here making sure nothing got by. So this is exactly what they need to do. It's great that they could do it their second game. U.S. looking for the ball. Venturini fouled home. Denmark striking it long. Foudy is there. Keller. U.S. have made three substitutions and have not lost their shape either offensively or defensively. The players have fit in. Raffinelli was looking for Ham headed down and now not yet out of the box. Finally it clears. In the 89th minute, a trip from behind. A dangerous free kick coming up and Christy Lilly may be setting her eyes on this one. This one's in Lilly's range. Venturini was the one brought down from behind. Setting up for the free kick. Lily may be the one to take it, or it could be Ham. If it's a right-footed shot, expect Ham. Otherwise, the left of Lily. Two to nothing. Lily has one of the goals. Milbert the other. Here's Christine. Left-footed shot smacked off the wall. Cleared out by Denmark. USA. Not holding on like they were the other day against China. They're fit, they're strong right here even at the end. Played long the other way. Back to the halfway line. Overbeck. Now to the right side. Foudy. Roberts. Tiffany Roberts going forward, looking for Ham. It's blocked back to Tiffany. Blocked the other way, and the recovery is strong from Foudy. We are in the 90th minute, according to our stadium clock. Trip from behind. Foul on Ashelson, and Mia Ham's not happy with that. He was going all the way to goal with that one, you can tell. Beat one player, beat another player, and the only thing Denmark could do is take her down. Especially back here where it's not in a very dangerous spot. Overbeck on the free kick. They fake like they were going to go long. They really want possession here. They don't need any more goals, even though the goal differential is important. Two-nothing is fine. Far side, Roberts. Knocked away. By the stadium clock, we are into injury time, and Brianna Scurry looking for that shutout. She's already had one against this team. 13 career shutouts. She would love to get this one. Yeah, it would be great for her confidence, but... You know, more than anything, you don't have, um, she may not have looked like she had a lot to do or a lot of big saves, maybe like the first game, but that just means she's done a great job organizing her defenders and been very busy making sure Carla's in the right place, making sure Fawcett's in the right place. It's got to feel good to go out of there, hopefully, with the shutout. 13 of them coming in. This would be 14 and second against Denmark. She had four straight earlier this year. So that three-goal barrage the other day, she doesn't give those up. The team doesn't give those up. It's a team stat, really. Throw in by Peterson. Lifted long. All the way deep. Scurry's coming out. That's a good play there for her because Denmark appeared to have the legs that time. Great read by Scurry. She came out early. That's the difference right there between an easy-looking save and possibly a goal. Tony DeChico said that he thought she would be the best goalkeeper once this World Cup was over. And now, I think they're going to bring it back. Yeah, I think Scurry stepped way outside the 18-yard box, and the ball was still in her hands. I was looking the other way, and when the referee blew the whistle, a red card. A red card has been issued. That is one heck of a call, if that's what it was for. 
He is presenting the red card to Scurry after the shutout. Tell you what, folks, this has implications you won't believe unless it's appealed and the U.S. wins this because she would have to sit out games. How about that? I'm in shock. That means Saskia Weber or Mary Harvey would have to play the next game or games depending on how this is interpreted. That is incredible. When I saw the referee blow the whistle, I really thought that it was for game over. We don't have any more stuff. As far as I know, she just, when she went to punt the ball, she stepped over the 18-yard box. Now, if she let the ball go as she was kicking it, as she was going over the line, that should have been okay, but she seemed to have stepped out a little further than normal. Well, Mia Hamm's going to put on a goalkeeper's jersey. Tony DeChico, referee, how about an explanation? Well, the world feed hasn't shown it back meaning uh, they got fooled by it because we would have seen it by now the pictures coming to you from Sweden we're gonna see it here right here as she's stepping over the line you know if he call was a linesman there right where she was to see it it didn't look like it was definitely not worth a red card now I've never seen that called I mean as a goalkeeper what do you know about that situation I've never seen it called you know I haven't seen it called ever and usually when that happens it's just marked as a handball right outside the 18 yard box I guarantee you that will be appealed we'll tell you more about it on Saturday guarantee that will be appealed that is harsh Mia's definitely one of their best athletes I'm sure that's why she's putting the gloves on shutouts on the line too and we're in an injury time there's Mia Ham. hello goalkeeper Here's the shot taken, and it goes wide of goal. <laughs> Brianna Scurry being consoled right now. I still think that call was harsh. I mean, I wish right now you had the, I guess we had the rule book in front of us to see exactly, but I've never, ever seen it called. And I can't tell you how many games I've seen or called, but I've never seen it. Denmark will take it down. Christensen. Now down the left side for Lilly. Knocked away. This one goes out of play. Christine Lilly will be ready to throw it in. Scurry only had to make two saves today. Larson, three. This ball is played across. Denmark will get it. Well, our stadium clock has been frozen at the 90-minute mark, so we got to be several minutes now into injury time, unless they kept the timeout clock or the time clock going here in the timeouts. Overback chasing it. Oh, avoided surgery, I thought, on that bad tackle. Studs up. So they will call this. The card will be yellow, apparently, on Christina Pedersen. That was tough, and Overbeck, though, did see it coming. Fortunately. It's obviously not the first time that's happened to Carla, someone coming at her like that. So dangerous on that tackle. Lily. Sending it long. Well, only the referee knows how much time is left in this one. But this is a lot added on, or so it appears. Peterson, down the left side. Going long on a couple of hops. Mia Hamm will protect that ball like it's gold. She wants to shut out for a teammate. Well, the fans are definitely in her corner, that's for sure. Well, here's where the USA will probably try to pick it up as well. They want the shutout. They want to protect it. They don't want Mia to have to face anything dangerous either at the other end. And another US player goes down and... I don't like the way this game has been called. That's, I said that earlier. Long before the red card on Scurry. Whatever the rules say on that. But in this particular case, a lot of things have been let go. It's been very physical. Right side, Keller. Keller, watched by home. And Keller's just going to eat up clock. Out of play it goes. I thought the referee just glanced at the watch, but I'm not real sure. Oh, 
Off the throw in. You would think this might be it. Raffinelli tossing it in. Goal kick coming up. No, corner. Or is he going to let her take the throw again? No, she's spotting it down. Corner kick, USA. Look at how many white jerseys are in the back there. There's at least four or five players in the back. No one too concerned about scoring this one. Just running the clock out. That's all they need to do. Right side. Keller. And this one goes out. Is this it? No, nope. throw in. Two to nothing, United States are leading it. Lily and Milbritt are your goal scorers. Keller. Looking to clear it out. I think somebody should check with the official, see if the watch is working. This is incredible. Or the stadium clock must have skipped uh, several minutes because this is long. Right side, Terp. Staples heads it out of play. Deep in the U.S. box. Now it is cleared by Fawcett. Good job by Fawcett to make sure it goes over the sideline and not the end line. So it's a throw instead of a corner. Denmark tossing it in. They'll keep it alive. Ashelson. Ashelson sends it across. Mia Hamm somewhere has got it stopped. How do you critique that goalkeeper? Couldn't have done it better myself. Mia Hamm will put it back in play. Ball is cleared the other way. Looking after it, United States, intended for Keller. Raffinelli chasing it. This one is knocked back in the Denmark side of the halfway line. USA leading it two to nothing. We are into injury time. Edge of the box, cleared away by the United States. And a foul is gonna be called. Overbeck has not missed one of those defensive headers. She is, she's not that tall, and she has won every single header, and it's always gone to a white player. Mia Hamm ready to put the ball back in play. Saskia Weber and uh, Mary Harvey better watch out. Surprise, game over. Two to nothing is your score. The United States wins it, losing a goalkeeper in the process. We'll be back. Get a jump on the soccer season. This Welcome back, everyone, to Yevla, Sweden. The United States has defeated Denmark. Final score is 2 to nothing. A nice win today for the United States. Pending the outcome of the China-Australia game now, the United States are on top of their Group C. Along with Amy Allman, I'm John Paul Della Camera. Great result for the U.S. And one of the players that really stepped up her game, Amy, was Christine Lilly. She scored the game's first goal. Christine Lilly was all over the field. She did great on attack, great on defense, played the whole 90 minutes. First goal, she does a great job staying in front of the ball, scoring in the only place where there wasn't a Denmark player. Gets through here, great pass. Tiffany Milbert goes straight to goal, waits for the keeper to make a step forward. It's the only time she can slot it through. Keeper can't save it. Game's over. Five straight games, Tiffany Milbert has scored one goal, and today she had to replace Michelle Akers. That will do it for us here in Yevla, Sweden. Coming up next on the news, it's the Hip Hop Body Shop. Once again, our final score, it is the United States winning 2 to nothing versus Denmark. For Amy Allman, I'm John Paul Della Camera. We say so long. We'll see you Saturday versus Australia. Hip plus hop equals anyone?
Anyone? For the answer to this and more, stay with us. <laughs>